I do sometimes wonder if there's like, you know, some some video connoisseurs and they're like, the video is but the production quality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what I want to talk about. Silly old dumb stuff. Not dumb, just dumb. It is also going to be dumb. But this is not our first time filming this. It is not. Because we had, you know, we did a recording, lost the footage. Anyway, but last time we recorded this, mm -hmm. like in the lunch before filming, mm -hmm. uh, our lovely producer, Aaron, hello, said, uh, so what's, what are you doing for your Halloween special then? And I was like, what? <laughs> what? We are, we are. Uh, Oh, I, oh, we had this all planned out. Wait. So yeah, it was like a plate went, this came out, and uh, actually, I'm, I'm maybe making a big deal of how much work I did. Because what, what I did is I, I did this. I changed the background, changed the title, and I was like, was zombie dog. And you know what? I was actually ha more happy yeah. with this title. Because I'm, I'm wanting to talk about like features of the web that are um, have failed to die. <laughs> 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 They're yes. still there, and we wish they weren't. Mm -hmm. And so I thought this was a good title, but Halloween has gone. Are you now going to use the next seasonal coloring? So welcome to Rudom the Reflowed Render. Wow, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> just it, go with it. <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> so this is the Christmas special now. <laughs> If I have to make this the Easter special, <laughs> there'll be trouble. Okay. I still kind of trying to think of like a reflow renderer. What does it look like? It doesn't make sense. Just, oh. just let it flow over you. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about old dumb stuff that we still yeah. have to live with. Uh, and in case you missed it, that's what we're talking about. Dumb stuff. Dumb stuff. And um, uh, you know, a lot of it is me um, quizzing you about this because you came from like more of a you joined the web late, right? You I, yeah. more of a, a traditional computer science background. So some of this stuff might be sort of before your time, but it's yeah. still stuff that we have to deal with in, mm -hmm. in browsers today. So let's uh, I'll ask you questions about it. See and I'll you... fail and then you'll educate me. And yeah, and you can and because see if you can remember how wrong you got it in the first time. Well the thing is this is all old dumb dom stuff. I like dumb dom stuff. Dum dumb. Yeah. Um I obviously didn't memorize it because it's old and dumb. So I, yeah. I think I've forgotten all about this. So hit me. Good. Which one of these is best? I'm feeling purplish today. Yes, correct answer, because that is oh. the Archibald color, and the other is the Serma color. As in, like, if I put these letters as a CSS color, that what comes out? Almost um, one of these. It only ah. works in the BG color attribute. I remember uh, the BG color attribute. Old DOM stuff. And it has very stupid, crazy ways of parsing uh, <laughs> something into a color. Um, I'll link to the full set of rules. But and looking at these words, I have no idea how you arrive at blue for Surma and at the purple for Archibald. This is not the full set of rules. I'm just focusing on the ones that apply to these okay. words. Mm -hmm. If it's not like a recognized color name or whatever, mm -hmm. what it'll do is it'll start off by removing all of the things which aren't hex, letters, <laughs> numbers, whatever. OK. Yep. Next step is to pad it with zeros until there's a multiple of three characters. Um, mm -hmm. I'm already there, nine, uh, so you get an extra. I get a zero. Cool. There you go. Uh, and then split it into three. For red, green, green and blue. blue. Yeah, absolutely. OK. And then truncate from the right until you have two characters <laughs> each. And there you go. So that's that's how one well, is I like how you one pad things to the right just to then potentially just cut it off later again. Yes, absolutely. And uh, like I say, there's even more weirder rules around it, but that is Great. that is how those ones work. Definitely should be in any good uh, web developer interview. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> uh, we'll, and we'll link to a website which lets you uh, sort of play around with the full rule set as well. That'll be in the description. All right, here it's we an go. Image. An right. image. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you an image, and you're going to tell me what format the image is. You ready? Didn't we do this once before? You show me an image, and I have. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Do it. Go on. But this is a different one. Here we go. What do you think? Uh, oh. Oh. Uh, oh. 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 Wait, these artifacts are all over the place. This is like. Well, it's it's animating, so my my immediate thought is GIF, but it has too many colors. Some of them have too many colors for GIF. Right. And so, like, and some of the artifacts are like very. This is AVIF 
artifact. Well done. Have, but the other ones are not. This looks like a two-color GIF or PNG. It's like, what is it, Jake? It makes no sense. I mean, <laughs> is it a video? Uh, well, <laughs> You're right that these are different formats that you're looking at. Oh. Uh, so that's a, 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 a PNG, I, I think. Um, uh, AVIF, that one. Um, WebP, that one. Uh, JPEG, that one. <laughs> uh, and AVIF, as you correctly identified. Um, but this is just a single uh, image tag on yeah. the page. No JavaScript doing any of this, because uh, it is a special kind of HTTP response. Uh, what? It Sounds... is oh, multi-part X mix <laughs> replace. With a Rudon boundary. With a Rudon boundary. <laughs> See, it's the Christmas episode. It makes sense now. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's a multi-part format. So it's like this. Uh, you, know, you get the boundary, you say what the content type right. is, and then you'll put the, the data there. And then that. And this is how it works. Oh, is this how old webcams used to work? This is how old webcams used to work. It just streamed JPEGs. It just streamed JPEGs. That is silly. And enough <laughs> of those still exist. God. That we have to maintain this uh, this code, and it's one of those things that um, I spoke to a Safari engineer on this, and it says like, "Yep, yeah, we break this all the time, and someone comes and tells us it's broken, like because people are still relying on it, and so we have you know got so many tests now to." That's you know, horrible. Here's the thing: if uh, you know in an image tag, it's only going to be able to display images, but if you mm. navigate to this resource, you can do anything. And it will this, so this works for navigations as well. This so this works in Firefox and Safari. We removed support for this in Chrome because we were just like, this seems like something we'll forget that's, about that's and like make a security Pandora's issue. box of issues. Exactly. <laughs> it, it works effectively like a page reload. You know, every okay. boundary will, will sort of be like a, a, a reload, but with the new content. Should I even ask how caching works in this context? Um, uh, no. <laughs> it's a, str a streaming resource, so it won't cache, I, right. I believe, I hope. That's an interesting <laughs> test to write, though. <laughs> I'm excited about that. But I think, yeah, um, I mean, it would only be able to cache, I guess, if it terminated. Like, So if, if you reach the end right. of the stream okay. at some point, I dread to think. I dread I to don't think. How I want to go there. That, that just seems. All right, next one. All right. We, we create an image. We create <laughs> mm, an image. Which of these works? Uh, which of these works? That well, as in, like, you know, a, an image will be displayed when the URL is assigned to it. It, it will behave like an image on the page. I, like, my, my intuition is because lol web would be both. I feel like there used to be, like, XHTML or something that had, like, image spelled out or something like that. Um, no, you simpleton. It's just that one. Of course it is. Do you not know HTML? Uh, <laughs> But you are right. Like this works. Oh, so, so the tag does exist. I was like, wait, I thought, okay. Yes, um, and it's it spans back uh, long before XHTML and that sort of stuff. Um, it's in the spec there. Uh, a start tag whose name is image, cause error, <laughs> changing to img and reprocess. And, and this don't was, ask. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> I did ask, uh, and I think it was maybe even Mosaic or some old Netscape version right. aliased it. Everyone else had to alias it. And now, there's, apparently, there's enough of this on the web. Really? We, yeah. Oh, I would love to see this. Actually, maybe we can run an HTTP archive query of like how many image spelled out tags. Do you know what? It's probably a harder query to do now than it used to be, because SVG has image oh, spelled out in it full. It does. Uh, so you, you, your query would have to cater for things which are actually SVG uh, image. Sure, there are regex for that. Uh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> pa parse it with regex. Well, why not? Um, but yeah, this is only corrected in the parsing spec. Which is why when you did create element, it doesn't work. Yeah, so, this is, yeah, so while the HTML is passed, this will get auto alias. And in JavaScript, the tag is not actually registered, and so it just fails. I see. Yes, you'll end up with an HTML or an element. Um, That's silly. But if you, if you do inner HTML, you'll hit this code path, and mm. it, will, it will work. So there you go. Old, old thing that we are still stuck with. Still Great. works today in all browsers. All right. That's a nice doc type. Yeah. I mean, I think this is maybe one that people know a bit more about. Because um, we, yeah, we all start our documents with, with this or, or something like this. I joined uh, the web, luckily, past HTML5 creation. So I never had to memorize the HTML4 doc type in previous shenanigans. I, do you know what? I, uh, I, don't, I never remembered the, the longer ones. I always copy and pasted them. I, uh, one, of, one of the first web conferences I attended before being at Google, uh, uh, Adi Osmani was uh, speaking. And he did a, 
And it's just totally a stunt, but I respected him for it. Like, he did some live coding, and the first thing he did was manually write out the, the, <laughs> the doctor, full doc type, and got a huge round of applause for it. <laughs> it was the first time anyone had recalled it from memory, I think. Uh, but the reason for this was... He had a macro. Oh, yeah. It was that, that hacker type of <laughs> website where you just do that, and it types out the code. Um, so the reason for this was Internet Explorer uh, shipped with a different box model. I mean, there was, there was a few other quirks, but the main one was Internet yeah. Explorer shipped with a box model where it was width and then border padding. It was box sizing by default. It was box size border box by default. Uh, whereas what the spec said and what other browsers shipped was width padding content border box. Content box, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes, we now can do both. In, yes, we have the CSS. option. We didn't back then. And let me tell you, developing for websites back then was painful because you had to you write a code that worked in both. You would basically, you would, you would never use width and padding and border together at the same time. You would put an, a wrapper element around that did the width. To maintain then, the sanity. Yeah, I can see, I can see that as yeah. actually more preferable. So workaround. unfortunately, around that era as well, a lot of people were writing websites for Internet Explorer um, that weren't yes. work in other browsers. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a situation where Internet Explorer couldn't change to do the right thing because it would break the sites that were written for Internet Explorer. Um, that Firefox didn't want to, you know, go against the spec, and also it would break sites which were written for the standards. Yeah. So that's why a doc type was introduced, which was kind of like the switch yeah. that Internet Explorer could make to, okay, we'll now do the proper thing. And some of the things were fixed at the, at the same time. Some of those quirks still exist in browsers. If you don't add the doc type, you can still run into those. Yep. We weird things happen. It's called should, quirks mode. Yeah. It's, I have forgotten something, and then things just get weird. I didn't know why until I learned about doc types is actually important. Because it seems meaningless when you write it. Like, why do I have to tell you that this .html yep. file is an HTML file? Yeah, and, and the reason <laughs> it's this is this, this was the shortest doc type which triggered standards modes. This, you know, it was originally the, you know you had your big long transitional yep. strict whatever, but this is the shortest version, and that's why it's in the HTML5 spec. Um, here's another one. Oh, I love document.all. You, yeah, do you use it? Are you yeah, I, 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 whenever I like do like some prototyping, I actually do an object destructure over it, where I just like I, I, I mark all oh, the elements. Nice, and I mark them as IDs, give them names, and I just say like const curly brace, type in all the names equals document.all, and then you have access to all your elements. That, that is nice, actually. VS yeah. Code always strikes out all as like, it's deprecated. Don't use it. And I'm it's like, like, but it's the web. Don't care. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go on, remove it. <laughs> remove dare document. You. All. Double dare you. Um, so yeah, it's, it, you can use it like an array, and it's all of the elements. Mm -hmm. um, you can call it like a function. It's a function? Yeah, it's callable as well. I know, it's, isn't it stupid? Um, and it will get you named items of that. And if there's more than, by name, I mean like the name attribute, the mm. ID attribute. If there's more than one with the name attribute, it will return a, a list, a node list oh, of those uh, things. Sometimes that, an element, sometimes a list. Yeah, it's fun. For, it's great when APIs do that. It's, the, oh, it's one of the worst bits of API design if it's, oh, it's going to return an array of things or a thing depending on how many they are. No, never do that. No. This, is, this is silly. Um, but yes, as you've, it, you can just use uh, you know, your object destructuring or whatever, that works. <laughs> This started life as an Internet Explorer API. It was not part of any standard. They just added it. But it was useful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, as you say, people were doing stuff like this, um, you know, even in the oldie days. But they were also doing this. The oh, because it was an IE only thing, that was an easy way to detect IE. IE. It became a proxy for this browser is IE. But then other browsers wanted to add this because now there's code out there with document.all. And this put like your Firefoxes and Operas in a in a difficult spot because they can't now add document.all because their code's going to go to an ActiveX, which is an IE special. An IE, another IE special. Um, but obviously, if they don't add document.all, then the first bit fails. Like, and you know, think people that are writing for Internet Explorer, but it would just work in Opera if they added this one API. Yeah. You know, so they're in a, they're in a, a, a tricky spot. I know where this is going. Yeah. Go on. Document.all is falsy. Document.all is falsy. It exists as a function and an object and an array, but it's falsy. Yes. So the, so the idea would be, uh, in this example, um, it, you know, document.all would be false. So in Firefox and Opera and whatever, this would run fine. Yeah. And it was also something that Internet Explorer adopted. Once they started dropping things like the ActiveX stuff, they were also able to make it. So now in every part of document.all is falsy, even in? It's in the HTML and JavaScript spec. <laughs> So this is the bit in the ECMAScript spec. Um, there is an internal slot called is HTML DDA, document.all, <laughs> uh, which defines this 
weird behavior where, yes, it's, a, it's an object, it's callable, but also if you try and convert it to a Boolean or compare it to things like null in a loose, uh, loosely typed way. I like that there's not a special branch in to Boolean or is loosely equal, but there's just this paragraph like, this behaves like undefined in these functions. Yes, yeah. I mean, yes, it is defined in the spec pros as well. Like, there's, there's the proper steps for it, but yeah, it is. That's incredible. Yeah. Oh, it is, it is horrible. Right, what's next? Ah, uh, yeah. Wait. Wait. This doesn't work, right? This doesn't work, right? Yeah, <laughs> that method does not exist. It drives me mad. That's why I always have the array dot, dot, dot spread around it as a workaround to so turn the question it into a proper is, array. Why isn't it a proper array? Like, why? Yeah, because it's not a document query stack to all doesn't give you, in contrast to get elements by ID or something, doesn't give you a live node list. Let's talk about that. Yeah, get element by tag name. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that would give you a live node list of all input elements, right? Which means that if you add another one to the page, the length is now 11. Yeah, you don't need to requery. Like, this array just requeries for you whenever you access it, which is yeah. a great performance for the gun. <laughs> yeah. So you could say, in some ways, like, oh, this has a reason to not be like an array because it's, it behaves. It's not. Although you, uh, you could, something could be pushing to it. Like, arrays are mutable. But it's, it's slightly weird. Uh, it also behaves uh, like document.all. Really? Yes. So it has the same. That uh, is horrible. Like that. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, yeah, it's it's. I wonder how TypeScript types this. I bet it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it surely. I hope it doesn't. Um, as you say, query selector role is not live. It's static. But uh, also still not an array. But also still not an array. And why? Uh, why is it like that? Because you still can't. Yeah, uh, things like dot map are undefined. And the reason. Goes back to some bad decisions that were made, um, <laughs> but for good reasons, let's say. Bad when, decisions for good reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so originally, the the DOM was envisioned as a language independent thing. Was this in the days of like VB script on the web and stuff? Well, so here's the 1998 uh, DOM spec in the Appendix D, which is <laughs> the Java bindings. Ah, would be my first language of choice to write a web app. And actually, the bindings for Java are much better than the bindings for ECMAScript in this version really? of the spec. That it, they really hand wave the, the, the JavaScript side of things. But this worked. This, this was a thing you could do. You could write a JavaScript applet that did DOM stuff. This is, this is some Java code. that That's incredible. So you could sort of think, right, well, hang on. This can't return a JavaScript array, you know? So the, right. I think the justification was, like, let's make our own type that is you know, interoperable. Uh, some abstract array like, yeah, OK. And yes, uh, you touched on VB script. This was in Internet Explorer. You could do this. You could, if you really wanted to spoil your morning, you could try and write this stuff in VB script rather than uh, JavaScript. Look like this. But one of the interest, and see so functions, whatever, but one of the really interesting things is you could then switch into JavaScript and be accessing those what? things. It kind of worked and kind of didn't. Like and <laughs> some some things surprisingly worked, some things didn't. And in some cases, you were actually dealing with a VB script object, but in JavaScript, which blah, 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 what very, could very, possibly very... go wrong? Right. So you could say if this, you know, if all of these types were, you know, not specific to any one language, it works well. I think I I I see what you mean. It was. Bad decisions driven by good intentions, which sounds like a My Chemical Romance album. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, th this just seems like way too many problems for way too little gain. Absolutely, we don't do this anymore. In fact, the, there's a whole spec called Web IDL, which mm. deals with how to convert from to and from uh, ECMAScript types to spec types. Right. So in a spec, we will you know say a function returns a sequence, and Web IDL you know goes into the low level of how that sequence is converted into an array. And that's what we do. We just, we just say, that's fine. If someone ever wants to make another language to do this web stuff, they will have to write a fork of the web IDL spec, which defines how these right. things map to their platform yeah. primitives. And that's, a, uh, well, mostly job done. We have been trying to fix this problem mm -hmm. over the years. Because I did add for each, right? Yeah. We added for each. We added iteration. But that still means like they're now adding these things. They're duplicating them for 
I guess, for example, all still in node lists. For node lists, yes. Um, so they're, they, they're not switching over to query selector all gives you an array. They no. say like it has to stay in node list, I guess, because the instance of and stuff is being used in the wild. Uh, more than that, unfortunately. Um, we, ca we can't do that because there's code out there that will break if we ship this. Really? Because it's it you know, it it's assumes like you know it, it, if the thing has dot map on it, then I have converted it to m my thing. It's it's a bit like the, uh, the old mul to yeah, tools the, issue that we had. Uh, the the flat school. Episode, <laughs> the yeah the, the uh, array dot flat stuff. Same problem. We can't ship it. Maybe one day we can. We'll keep checking. Incredible. And, yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, as you say, array spread. Yeah, make it an array. Job done. Yeah. All right. Last one. The whole reason behind this episode <laughs> was because of this tweet, um, where I remembered, or oh, you know, in a, in a bit of spec writing, had to deal with document.domain, and it ruined my day. It's very complicated. And you were like, "Why well, don't explain that to me?" And I put this episode together and forgot about that. So it's a <laughs> last-minute addition of like, "Oh, hang on, the whole purpose of this was to talk about document.domain." Um, Teach me. This doesn't work um, because the iframe is on a different origin to the page. Right, so you can't access the content document from that iframe because different origin. Absolutely. Will throw, right? It will throw. That's when you, yeah, when you do dot content document. I think yes, dot content document will be where it fails. If the iframe does this, it starts working. So a subdomain can declare itself as one of the higher level domains. Yeah, they can move up. Um, and now they match, and now it works because they're they're effectively same origin, kinda in some ways, and this is why it's bad. Yeah, like that does like IDB suddenly switch its contents? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know how it would because it's you know it, part of the problem here is this is a synchronous operation, and so browsers will if something's Another origin, or if something's a different site, we we put it on a different process. Yeah, as if we can, depending on the device constraints, because it's much more secure. Yeah, we can't do that with Something these two origins because it, it, they can synchronously be come into a position where they can access. I was going to say it. because usually we say like, oh, it's good when you have an iframe either sandboxed or a different domain because then the event loops run independently. Like if the iframe janks, it doesn't affect the the hosting site. Yeah, because it's a different thread. In this case, they are a different origin, but I guess they will remain on the same event loop because there yeah. is the chance that the iframe goes lol. And that's why it's yeah. The, we talk about these things as being different. You know, we can put it on a different process if a different site. Right. Rather than different origin, and that's because of this. Uh, and yeah, like I say, it doesn't change the cookies it has access to. It doesn't change IDB, local storage, anything like that. It's only for a very small subset of operations. Uh, so basically, like it's this. just a source of massive headaches. Yes, it is. Um, <laughs> and and it also runs into the problem of like uh, we've discussed this in an, another episode. Could it could it go at a level up and just become com? <laughs> no, no, of course it can't, and it can't for the, the yeah. The ETLD plus one is back. Yes, or the public suffix list, which yeah. is what it is. This list of thousands and thousands of items to define the boundaries for this, and also the boundaries for cookies. Yeah. But yes, it's another part on the web that that you know doesn't work on origins. It works on sites, which depends on this massive list that we talked about in another episode. And that's it. That's all I've got. There's your old Dom stuff Christmas <laughs> special episode. <laughs> I've got nothing more to say to you. No, I'm, 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 I'm speechless once again about the, the legacy of the web and what still remains of it. But it means websites written 20 years ago still work today. Kind of. Kind of. <laughs> so I think we said it in some other episodes. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that in case we put them out in a different order. We start that bit again. <laughs> Huh? <laughs>